When it comes to my end of the year video, I usually do my top movies of the year. But I am currently not doing that yet. I'm gonna wait till January to do that because I wanna try to see most of the movies. Because the problem with those videos, usually there are movies that get left out. So yeah, I'm putting a hold on that for a moment. So I decided to do something different. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Mancos. Now, I see a lot of people doing videos on uh, uh, adaptations of animes, like, oh, top 10 worst live action adaptations of anime. And in recent time, we've been seeing uh, Netflix doing these, like, One Piece live action, and that doing really well, and people really liking it. And apparently, when it, you know when a company is doing stuff, and they try, and people don't like it, they immediately just can it, like with Cowboy Beep Up. Damn right it is, because Chad, you are you are But when something is successful, they immediately go, okay, make a hundreds of those. They have already greenlit the Naruto live action, and uh, what was the other one? There was some other, I don't remember what it was, but I'll put it on uh, up here for you. And this could go either two way, either they're gonna be good, like the One Piece, version which had like passion and love put into it or it's gonna go down the same path as like mandalorian you know you have the first season of mandalorian where which you which had like love and passion put into it but then you have this second season and the third season and then you have a book of boba fett and you have ahsoka and you have kenobi you just have these lacy cash grab passionless project that got thrown together because Disney said, oh, people like Star Wars shows? Okay, let's make hundreds of them. But I don't want to do a another top 10 or 20 live terrible live action adaptations of anime. People often talk about like the anime like it's pure and perfect, but they, they gotta keep in mind that the anime is also an adaptation of the mangos. So I want to take it to the source. This is going to be the top 20 worst adaptations of Mancos. Number 20, Dora the Explorer, Dora Tankeka. Now most of you in the West probably remember Dora the Explorer as the uh, annoying child children's show from the early 2000s with the little Spanish girl and her talking monkey and her magic map and the backpack and she's going around like traveling around and solving little puzzles till she reaches her mark. I know it's gonna surprise you, but this is based on a manga. The reason why I'm putting this on the list is because uh, Dora the Explorer, the American cartoon version, is terrible. It's really dumbed down, it's made for little babies. But Dora the Explorer manga is way deeper and way more complicated. The original manga has beautiful art. It's, it's written and drawn by the amazing author Yoshiko Fuse. In the first episode of the American adaptation, uh, Dora and her partner, the monkey, have to find the big red hill. But in the manga, it was a way, way longer arc. In the American show, it was just like this really short little episode for little babies. But in the manga, it was deep, it was complicated, and the journey was harsh. Dora and Boots are really tested as characters through every single one of their journey, and the manga is just way better. Number 19, Spongebob Squarepants, Spongebob. Now, I don't dislike the American adaptation of Spongebob Squarepants. I actually kind of like it for what it is. It's a fun little comedy show and has really fun adaptations of the characters. But when it comes to the manga, the American show really fades. Where the American show is like this fun cartoon for children with some adult satir satirizing humor. Uh, the Manko is a really complex, dark, shonen action series. The author of Spongebob, the Manko, is Shinji Tanimoto. There actually was a YouTube channel that decided to actually, like, you know, a uh, adapt the Manko in animation form, and it was fantastic. It was so great to see the man Manko get some respect. Number 18, Teletubbies, Teretsubu. Teretsubu is a uh, horror manga written by Yori Hano. And for some reason, the British were like, hey, this would make a really good children's show. The manga takes a lot of inspiration from Junito 
and uh, the, in the in the manga, the Teletubbies are horrifying creatures of absolute nightmares. But in the British show, they're just like this like dumbed down little children show. Yeah, I don't know why. Number seventeen, Lazy Town, Raijun. The Lazy Town manga was written and drawn by Miyuki Ono. Now the American adaptation isn't terrible per se. It kind of captures the same spirit of the mango but i will have to say the mango is just way more action focused you get to see spartacus and robbie rotten fight more in more epic duels something can do jojo but in the american adaptation they really dumped down the action to focus more on the message of you know eating healthy and staying fit which is all right i guess number 16 friends Tomodachi. Tomodachi was written and drawn by Asami Toyora. And uh, the American adaptation, they turned it into a fucking sitcom. I have never been more insulted by an adaptation. Tomodachi follows the general idea that the American adaptation does. A group of fans living in the same kind of house in different apartments and interacting with each other. But where the American adaptation really deviates from the manga is in the sitcom or the lighthearted comedy. In the original manga, manga uh, Tomachi, uh, the whole show is a really heavy emotional drama where all the characters are going through different hardship. But I don't really see why the Americans thought, oh, this would make a great sitcom, but you know, the Americans do what they do. Number 15. Barbenheimer. Kazuki Masa did an excellent job of bringing the iconic Barbie doll and uh, Robert J. Oppenheimer, bringing them together and creating a really amazing story about them. But for some reason, the we got this like British prick called Christopher Nolan and this American director woman were like, "Hey, let's uh, let's take uh, the Barbie doll and." Uh, an Oppenheimer and rip them apart into separate projects and then release them at the exact same day. I think that would be great, but I say that's bullshit. They should have kept it close to the manga. Number 14, The Thinning, Kanbatsu. Now, The Thinning is one of my absolute favorite mangos. It's a really great suspenseful uh, mystery, but what really ruins the American adaptation is uh, one thing and one thing only, uh, Logan Paul is in it. Number 13, Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, I don't like this manga at all. Yeah, I think it's cringe and lame, but what really pisses me off about the American adaptation is that it stays too close to the manga. And yeah, like I said, I hate the manga, so I hate the movie as well. Number 10, Ben 10. Ben 10 manga is one of the best shonen action series that has come out in a long time. It's out there with Jujutsu Kaisen and all the other big hitters like Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Naruto. It's one of the best. It's one of the best shown in action series you can ever read. The art is beautiful. The arcs and the characters are amazing, and all, all the abilities are really fleshed out. But the show is kind of like a dumbed down version of it. Really simple, really basic, and you know it's not bad, but could be better. Number nine, Dragon Josh. Now I don't like Dan Schneider, the previous producer of multiple Nickelodeon shows. Uh, he took one of my all-time favorite uh, Sochio mangos and uh, ruined it. I'm talking, of course, about iCarly. But he took Dragon Joss, which is one of the best uh, comedy, like duo comedy mangos, and just made it really dumb and annoying and made it like a really American shit. Yeah, so fuck Dan Snyder. Number eight, Jimmy Neutron. Now, Jimmy Neutron doesn't actually abbreviate too much from the manga, it stays kind of faithful to it, but what I hate about Jimmy Neutron is the animation. Instead of using a beautiful 2D animation, they used the really primitive, ugly 3D animation and just made this made the show really dated and ugly. So yeah, that's a, that's a loss for me. Number 7, Kim Possible. This is another case of uh, Disney kind of dumbing down a really good manga. Uh, Kim Possible manga was a really... Uh, a suspenseful, intense spy thriller, while the show is just kind of dumbed down for kids. Again, nothing terrible, but could have been better. Number six, the Berenstain Bears. Now, the Berenstain Bears have been a household classic in Japanese houses for for decades now, and the American adaptation is like 
fine, but nothing great. Number five, Angela Anaconda. Now this is an insult to all mangoes out there. They uh, just took the mango and just animated the panels. They didn't even bother and the show just looks like absolute shit. Number four, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Now this is another case of taking a really good uh, horror mango and turning it into a uh, just a casual children's show. Like the show isn't terrible, it's, it's enjoyable for children, but it really fumbled the adaptation. It's just doesn't, it's not the same. Number three, Spy Kids. It's the same thing here with uh, Kim Possible. The Mongo is a really deep, complex, and has really great character writing. And of course, the the espionage is really complex and well written. Here, it's all dumbed down for little children. It's not really that special. Number two, Blue's Clues. Now, the manga of Blue's Clues is a psychological horror thriller about a man losing his mind and going crazy. But once again, the Americans don't like horror and just dumb everything down and make it for little babies. Because they, they look at mangoes and think, oh, this is just like stuff for little babies, I guess. Let's dumb it down. Absolute travesty. Now, before we get to number one, I want to mention a few honorable mentions here. These uh, are stuff that is also not really great, but not bad enough to not make the list. So let's start here. First off, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. It's a Tom Cruise movie, uh, which is an adaptation of the manga called uh, Live, Die, Repeat. It's fine, I guess. Uh, the movie is, uh, yeah, it's actually pretty good. It's not bad. Second one we got here is Alan Wick. I think uh, the mango of Alan Wick is way better. The story of a uh, writer who gets lost in the dark place and becomes an action movie star is really cool mango. But for some reason, uh, Sam Lake took the writer stuck in the dark place and wrote Alan Wick for some reason. And another guy took the, took the action element and made John Wick. So it's kind of like a mixed bag. Like if you watch... Uh, if you play the video games Alan Wake and then watch the movies John Wick, you kind of get the idea what the mango is about. But yeah, it's, uh, that's about it. Dragon Ball Evolution, low-key, unappreciated gem. Death Note from 2017, good effort, pretty decent. I mean, uh, Willem Dafoe did a really good job. The Last Airbender, and Matt Shyamalan is misunderstood and the movie is pretty great. I think it's a really underrated movie. And the number one most terrible adaptation of a mango is Cory in the house. Now, I am no crybaby. I don't really get emotional over media. I've never I never shed a tear over anything, but god damn it, I'll admit that the Cory in the house mango has really it really touched me emotionally. I I cry like a baby over that one. But the American adaptation is terrible. I think it's really stupid. It ruins the characters and it's just yeah, if you've really, if you've read the mango, you really know what I mean. It's a, a travesty. It's awful. It's just the worst. Well, that's it for my top twenty worst adaptations of mangoes. Uh, please subscribe and whatever, and my movies of the year will come out later. See you.